So today's video is going to be part one of two for the end game videos in the process of the pro series. If you guys don't remember, this series is basically one where I go over a highly advanced topic of the game every single video. And in today's video, we're going to be covering the fragging aspect of the end game. The next video is going to be focused more on end game rotations. However, in today's video, I want to hyper focus on fragging. Be sure to use code SonataYT in the Fortnite item shop if you guys do want to support me. Let's hop right into this video. Now first, I want to go over the initial type of endgame eliminations that you're going to be getting. These are going to be known as impact frags. You guys have probably heard this term if you watch any Fortnite competitive, but an impact frag is essentially the kills that you get in order to refresh on loot, ammo, materials, and health during the endgame. These are most commonly referred to as refreshes. Whenever you or your duo is low on materials and assets for the endgame, you're going to be looking for an impact frag. Now in terms of how to get impact frags in the best way possible, the overall best way to get impact frags is to look for people to attack on the low ground. And what I mean by this is that you should look on lower layers to try and spray and kill people in order to drop down and then get the loot in a protected manner. The reason I say that you guys look at the low ground is because nine times out of 10, the majority of people who are low on ammo, mats, health, and loot are gonna be on the low ground. This means that once you kill them, you can go down and you can get the materials, the siphon, and also everything you possibly could need. Most of the times during end games, you don't really need ammo, and siphon mats is enough to last you quite some time. Also, it's much easier to spray from a highly elevated position onto a lower position than it is to spray from low to high. Those are the main reasons I would recommend you guys look on the low ground when trying to get impact frags. One other method for getting impact frags is to drop down people from above you. You can drop these people into your box, into areas that you're trying to box, or into areas where they will be easily sprayable by your team. The reason to drop these guys down is because it's very simple to get the kills once you drop them. Most of the time when these teams are dropped, they're going to be very disoriented and not sure where they are. This is going to give you and your duo the element of surprise on these people, and you're going to be able to deal as much damage as possible trying to get the elimination and close out those kills. Another benefit of this is that you close off the layer that's above you. If there's any team that's tarping above you that might be taking your build pieces, if you kill them, then their tarp is now essentially yours. So you can go back through it looking for any loot, looking for any pathways to rotate to zone, that's gonna really help you out in the long run. Those are some of the reasons that you guys should consider dropping down people from above you in order to get impact frags as well. And now the third method of getting impact frags is to double team a duo that is on your own layer. Now what this will do is this is gonna help you use those fighting methods that I talked about in my mid game video, but then isolate them into the end game. You're supposed to ensure that whenever you look for a team on your own layer, that you focus them together using strategies such as the pinch method, poking, or directly engaging with a team. The pinch method, like I said before, is gonna be when you pinch a team together by attacking from different sides. The poke method is gonna be spraying them from various directions while one of the players tries to take a wall and finish out the fight. And then the last method of directly engaging is just jumping into the box and trying to get the kills as quickly as possible. I would recommend that you guys try to focus on using pinching and poking. Those are the two that I could recommend to you. But directly engaging does work from time to time. The benefit of looking for teams that are on your own layer is that they're the people that are closest to you and probably the most accessible. They're probably also the safest kills to get loot for because you don't need to do any layer changes. And then lastly, they're going to be pretty stacked on loot and materials considering that they're on a good layer such as you are. You need to ensure that you use any of these three strategies, which is attacking people on the low ground, dropping down people from above you, or double teaming on your own layer, because in the end, it's going to help you out a lot with getting these impact frags and refreshing on your loot, ammo, and materials. Now moving on to the second type of endgame elimination, this is going to be point frags. Now a point frag is one that you're getting in order to maximize your point output within the tournament. This is for where you aren't as concerned with the loot, but more concerned with just getting the elimination points. Now point frags seem pretty self-explanatory, but there is an actual very effective way to get them. One way to get point frags is to look for people to spray and do as much damage as possible, which maxes out the amount of eliminations you can get. One good way, once again, is to look at the low ground. Except this time, I would not recommend that you guys drop for the loot. What you can do is just look at the low ground, spray all of these tarps that you see on the bottom, try to beam people from the top down and get as many kills as possible. I would not recommend you guys look at the high ground layers, simply because people up there are going to have a lot more mats, loot, and just higher amounts of health in general. It's important that you guys understand how the loot changes from layer to layer, but most importantly, you must focus on dealing as much damage to the weakest opponents as possible. Something that really helps you out is looking for good positions yourself. You can try to position yourself on the high ground and other areas with good sight lines. There's going to be various different places that are like this, and I would overall recommend that you guys understand where the best place to be is during the endgame. Now the second way to get point frags is to look for kills together as a duo. If you guys are looking for kills constantly, 
especially in areas behind your tarp, it's nine times out of 10 gonna work and you're gonna get the kills. I'd recommend you guys try to get ahead of zone and then go deeper into the back of your tarp and then maybe open some walls, open some edits, look for some kills on people going and straggling behind at the end of zone. They don't even need to be on the low ground, they can be straggling at the end of zone on your layer. Once again, I wouldn't recommend that you look on the high ground though. But as long as you see people who are weaker than you and you try to eliminate them, you're gonna get tons of point frags. Now the next topic I wanna cover is when and when not to fight during the end games. This is a very important topic that you guys need to understand, and I can generally summarize it by saying there are three of the best times to fight. Obviously there are more, but I would recommend you try to learn these three and understand them to the best of your ability. I would recommend that you fight when you are stacked and you have the ability to catch a team off guard. This will give you the element of surprise and make it a lot easier for you to win. I would also recommend that you look to fight when you are shambles and you are in need of loot, mats, and health. This is where you can use those impact frag methods and get those refreshes from those kills. And then lastly, if you and your IGL are ahead of the zone and you have the ability to look back with your assault rifles and go back in your tarp and look for edits, that's another time that I would recommend you try to look to fight. If you're good on zone, there's absolutely no harm with looking for some kills. It's important that you get kills in order to succeed in the tournament. That's a very crucial part of your points. I recommend that you don't fight if you are doing well on loot but you're not ahead of zone, and you always need to remember that Storm is your main enemy as a duo. You cannot be dying to Storm in terrain, you need to focus on getting yourself ahead of zone as quickly as possible. And once you're there, and you're safe and sound in terms of mats, loots, and material, only then would I recommend you fight if you guys are stacked. But once again, if you're not, if you're shambles, look for a refresh, that's the most important thing. But those are the times I would tell you when and when not to fight during the end games. Now the last section is going to be duos fight chemistry. This is a pretty self-explanatory section, but you can be building chemistry by playing arena and scrims together. Ideally, ladders are some of the best practice that you can possibly get for the endgame fights, but a brand new scrim server has popped onto the scene. If you guys don't know, Vital Scrims is by far the best practice nowadays. Pretty much everybody in my friend group plays it. There's a scrim system called After Hours, which is very important. It's hosted by OA Manu, and this is what you should try and practice in order to build fighting chemistry during the endgame. If you put enough time and effort into this, eventually you're going to succeed very much during these end games. Focus on all three aspects of impact frags and point frags, understand when and when not to fight, and you're gonna 100% succeed in getting as many kills as you need. Anyways guys, that is the video on how to get good eliminations during the end game. If you guys did enjoy, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel down below. I spent a lot of time working on this video, which is why it actually took so long. Also, I've just been busy with the ending of school happening soon. I should be making tons of more videos this summer, so please stay tuned for that. But that's about it for this video, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.